Um, and APS um, came in uh, asking their goals for the project, or they came in needing support for the teachers in terms of uh, professional development, capacity building, and student success. So one of our biggest barriers um, that we came up to was uh, uh, political, the political climate, the fragility of the program, because it still hasn't been fully launched yet, and funding, right? Like, so there's lack of funding both from APS and then trying to find funding from our end as well. Um, so some of, so these little boulders are like resistance that we've had throughout, uh, resistance through the skepticism in the project from both sides at various points. Um, and one of the biggest, uh, I think, was the language. So kind of like we had with the role play, right, even in the well intentions, uh, the good intentions of everything, right, like really understanding how to translate a lot of the grant opportunities and <coughs> academic language to um, a non-academic crowd was one of the biggest uh, res parts of resistance. Um, and then we had, I don't know if you want to talk about these a little bit more. So one of the, some of the wonderful things that happened was through our networks we were able to connect with other experts in ethnic studies that kind of um, brought their expertise. Christine's leader was one of them. Mia, who's been teaching a course that, um, at Sosa Provencio, um, in the College of Education at Testimonios using youth participatory action research. Also, the National Network of Education Research Practice Partnerships was, um, I reached out to them and asked them about the work that they were doing and whether or not we could potentially form uh, a group of us in different cities, um, mostly in California, that have already done intentional research that looks at the positive impacts, academic impacts on, um, of ethnic studies on youth. But um, through these discussions now, we're thinking about a multi-site study that CBPR and also includes um, health, which they have not looked at before. So because of these wonderful things, we were able to produce a two-page implementation guide that came out of San Francisco, which is leading the country, um, and using rubrics for um, um, the optimal implementation of ethnic studies with key, va key values and key concepts that undergird why they were so successful with um, their programs. So we kind of made these into tributaries that fed water into our river, but then what really got the water moving or water running really fast, uh, well, fast was the visioning exercise. So um, Mina uh, came in with APS and with all of the partners at the table, we did a visioning exercise where we really sat down and talked about our goals, our visions for the project, what we wanted to see in terms of what the benefits were going to be for both, uh, both partners involved. Um, and it created uh, a lot of harmony, purpose, I think buy-in, synergy, and more importantly, uh, most importantly, I think is focus, and we really started to have these focused um, visions of what we wanted to see come out of this. And so our objectives at the end of all of this is to, one, to empower teachers to have student empowerment and to drive results and identity um, changes within students, like um, in terms of health, um, their own personal identity and confidence, um, grades, um, about being able to evaluate the partnership, the CBPR partnership between um, between the groups, and ultimately pedagogical shifts for the entire school district.